is June Alma of the June Alma Show of Team. Hi, this is June Alma of the June Alma Show. Hi, this is June Alma of the June Alma Show. This is June Alma of the June Alma Show. Hi, this is June Alma on the June Alma Show. Good evening. And welcome to another beautiful episode where we have um, very uh, special guests tonight. And um, we are also very happy because tonight uh, we have invited one of the um, icons of uh, Philippine culture and uh, especially the performing arts and uh, theater. And uh, she has been um, practically a permanent fixture in uh, Philippine uh, uh, f Philippine arts and, and history, and uh, she, with all her advocacy, she has been a very uh, famous uh, figure in in that realm. She has had uh, several awards and um, and uh, citations, and uh, all her works have been um, very uh, you know popularly um, um, praised. And um, um, tonight, we're very lucky to have with us um, the former uh, the. Existing, is it existing? No, no, former, if you For, mean former, NCCA. Uh, former head of the NCAA. NCCA. NCCA, yeah. uh, and currently the um, also the, the the founder of the Philippine Educational Theater Association, mm -hmm. simultaneous with being uh, the president of the International Theater Institute, yes. and also she directs this uh, lately this very uh, very uh, noble. Advocacy um, leading the um, um, disabled out of school youth, um, you know, the artists and the musicians there and the painters, and it's called the uh, Dream Dreamworks. Earth Savers. Oh, oh sorry, Earth, Earth Savers. Savers. Yes. Yeah. So she uh, she directs the ensemble of yeah. Earth Savers, and um, wife of the former uh, senator, minister, secretary, now commissioner of um, Climate Change Commission. Please welcome uh, the very charming still, uh -huh, Mrs. Uh, Cecil Guidotte Alvarez. Good evening, ma'am, and Good welcome to you. the Juno Talk Show. It's so nice to be able to have a conversation with you, Pantuhan lang, diba? And uh, I was actually delighted to find out that June is the daughter of a very dear friend and uh, was serving so well as Secretary of Education, uh, Dr. Mona Falisno. So let's at once uh, wonderful connect with June. Thank you. So yeah, my mother sends her regards to you. Yeah. And uh, it's it's wonderful because we met French Embassy sponsored um, um, fashion and textile event at the Central Bank, and so uh, we have said that we must return and interview because she's such a personality. <laughs> so tell us, ma'am. Uh, we understand that you know uh, y you have just returned from yes. uh, the Paris Accord, yeah. and everybody is you know uh, keeping keeping a close watch on the developments. Yeah. Uh, at the Paris uh, Climate Change Accord. It's, uh, uh, you can't believe it's like uh, ecstasy after the agony. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, for about, well, that was the 21st year, it's COP21. I happened to be with my husband in uh, Berlin for the first COP. And I know how uh, difficult and uh, truly well complicated all the discussions have been and there is an urgent need to have you know the global deal if we want to save ourselves from all this uh, climate catastrophes extreme weather is not just in our place kita naman natin here in the Philippines of course we know uh, the destruction the uh, suffering of our people we still have um, refugees in no. dead cities you have almost a replay of similar problems in in the east coast of america it was also in latin america in london it's everywhere so i think 
they really got uh, conscientized mm -hmm. uh, and uh, at last the global deal was forged but um, it wasn't that easy it needed um, on the civil society side uh, from which we uh, enter no? you need to really help in raising awareness conscientizing and making the leaders know that hey they have to really uh, they can't just say oh we want to give you good governance and allow this uh, incredible uh, survival issue so it was it was an exhilarating experience when the gavel was banged and I think you could see it everybody was screaming jumping embracing um, would you you know tell us how I uh, was sure that you know the whole world is now uh, you know together with you and you know achieving this milestone that 195 countries have signed yeah. and uh, I'm sure you know you have done your you were there because your expertise is the arts and yeah. you were telling us about how you have you know organized all these you know all these uh, uh, talents into yeah. trying to help help out yeah uh, dramatize or send the message across I, I think um, there is a task for all artists in the world mm -hmm. you know, they can be harnessed as a creative army mm -hmm. in order to popularize the science of uh, global warming and the need uh, to be uh, disaster prepared in your mindset so um, what we were trying to do is use the different disciplines of the arts mm -hmm. and media mm -hmm. uh, in order to reach every sector of society mm -hmm. because you can't keep this as a discussion among the academe and the scientists so it's uh, yeah kailangan alam ng taxi driver alam na all mm -hmm. everybody you know and um i i'm glad that well the pope was very much into uh this awareness raising and uh, calling leaders to task and all other religions as a matter of fact um, my husband has this interfaith dialogue but we do the intercultural so um, using um, the concept of um, inclusive and transformative education through arts and media fusing technology and uh, arts we are able to reach, develop the talents of um, the marginalized, like persons with disabilities, uh, indigenous peoples, uh, uh, out of school youth, because they have to be part of this movement of the total action agenda. And if you're talking about disasters, I mean, <laughs> Uh, it's causing the death, the destruction, and so much disabilities. We have also found out that uh, the survivors, the refugees, suffer so much trauma. You know, uh, they're discombobulated, tulala uh, really, or suicidal. They, they don't have the energy to live. If you lost your home, you lost your loved ones, it's so painful uh, there is no uh, energy uh, to exist or the will to exist so we have used arts to involve them to get them to participate to release their angst to uh, express uh, what they feel and then luckily we have developed the earth savers ensemble uh, and we call them handicapable artists. They're blind, <laughs> they're deaf, mm -hmm. uh, they're armless mm -hmm. uh, or uh, mentally challenged, but together they're able to achieve or triumph over their adversity, sing, dance, uh, create the drama about uh, the needs of society, mm -hmm. to care, uh, to share, to uh, involve and let people belong mm -hmm. to a community 
and we've done that to the arts and when they perform and that's why they were honored as UNESCO Artists for Peace when they perform um, it gives an inspirational um, message to those who are equally in in a very bad state emotional state and they realize hey if this crippled can move or will to move and like dance and the singers are all blind there they get amazed and they begin to reflect that perhaps you know it's not uh, that situation where you think everything is lost and you don't have the will to live so it's motivating them to rise up from the ashes to triumph over adversity. That's a very noble, you know, objective in action. Uh, and we've seen it work. Mm -hmm. And that's why um, uh, we were uh, allowed to develop a global module by UNESCO, which is headed by a, a very brilliant humanist, um, Director General Irina Bokova. And she gave us the patronage to develop this techno arts camp for all these vulnerable groups. So it's been rewarding, and we're able to infuse uh, the necessary information and knowledge so that they can cope, mm -hmm. so that uh, they know what they must do. Okay, so um, it's really very, uh, you know, like it's a beautiful masterpiece that you're getting everybody together. Yeah, you know, that's because the value this is of the arts. Okay. It's, uh, it's really communal. Mm -hmm. eh? You don't do it just for yourself. You, you really have to communicate. It's a social art. So you have to have a love affair with your audience. Mm -hmm. You must care for them. And that's what you give. That's what you offer. And that's what you sort of entice them to reflect. And um, but you know, going going to the uh, to to the root root cause of the problem. Um, no matter how beautifully presented and organized everything seems, but you know, uh, it's still there. And I mean, unless there's a real concrete action out of the um, you know the accord. That, that all the countries have come together for yeah. and you know it's basically I think like a basic behavior change yeah because it, it boils down to greed yeah and, you know it's just basic uh, human you just hit feelings <laughs> the hit the nail. Yeah. yeah it's really greed if uh, why we're involved in the arts because you can motivate people you can change uh, thinking you can touch hearts mm -hmm. so that they can empathize, they can act, yes. and it's really behavioral change. Okay. It's a, a shift of attitudes. As you said, throw away greed and bring in compassion. Exactly what the Pope was saying, okay. compassion, yes. caring, mercy, okay. and, uh, uh, you know, throwing away also selfishness, thinking about the other, especially those in need. Correct. So, but you know, like artists, you know, and in their in all their glory and giftedness, um, it's it's an observation that artists are, are usually um, uh, liberated, yeah. and you know, uh, a lot of them are wayward. And so, how are we able to, you know, uh, uh, bring them towards the direction that this is the mindset that we should, you know, greed, greed, and you know, the good for everybody is, yeah. is the is the bottom line here. So, how are you able to uh, to rally all of them to you know? I think it's just the kind of animating idealism and confidence, and um, letting them feel that they are important in helping change the world to a better, safer, healthier, sustainable. Uh, world for everybody. It makes a being not just me, you know. Yeah. But a lot of a lot of them are also, um, you know, um, because they're liberated. There is quite some some arrogance, or you know, there's a little respect for the 
old traditions. Yeah. And you know, when well, lawmakers or the authorities come up with laws and rules and policies that are for the good of the majority, then how are you able well, to... Well, I think if we can really present or orient the arts as a public service, mm -hmm. you know, not just commercialism or ego Ooh, it's nice to be popular everybody's going to clap at you you can wave but, but if you consider that it is a metier of service that you have to give that you have a talent and if you appreciate this talent that was developed then you will pay back and continue caring that's why when I was in NCCA, I was telling everybody who was getting a grant must have a payback. They must have an outreach. Mm -hmm. um, it's important to put that mindset because for a while, arts has been, you know, looked up as arts for art's sake or arts for commercialism. Um, arts can be, well, you can be unique or something. It's it's uh, there is a different uh, uh, thinking before about arts. Now it's uh, being harnessed, and the United Nations itself, especially through UNESCO, has been pushing to let people understand and leaders in particular. Because when you talk of arts and culture, and really uh, the essence of culture, which is the womb of um, acting for good governance, good citizenship, uh, that's you know. Uh, they've always thought of arts as oh extracurricular lang yan. Oh. Uh, if there's anything later on uh, you can help uh, the arts. But arts is feeding our spirit, our intellect. It's the soul, the identity of a nation. And if only uh, leaders understand it for that uh, kind of uh, meaning to society, then uh, I think there will be a better regard. That's why we're hoping to elevate the status of artists to uh, make sure that um, they have the same uh, benefits as well. Because sometimes those who really serve don't earn it's generally volunteerism and uh, there's got to be a way of um, thinking of a meaningful relevant arts rooted in developing a pride of habitat pride of history pride of um, heritage and uh, displaying the creative genius of our people especially in creative industries our indigenous peoples for instance they're incredible what they produce and yet they're marginalized okay so uh, we are our discussion is getting more and more exciting <laughs> and uh, so uh, we'd like to take a break for a while and uh, see you all shortly thank you Hi, we're back. This is Junawa, the Junawa Show. And uh, back to uh, Miss Cecil, Kidote of Alvarez. Uh, Ma'am, you were talking about the indigenous uh, yes, people uh, and all it's, this. It's very important that our creative uh, juices find uh, some roots or wellspring from our indigenous heritage. Uh, the wisdom of our indigenous people, uh, it's incredible. It created the rice terraces. I mean, this is uh, 
incredible engineering skills of our ancestors, which provided sustainable uh, agriculture and irrigation. I mean, that's how 2,000 years ago, and that's their heritage, which is ours too. And we have to appreciate it. If you see the crops that they create, uh, the chants, the lullabies, the rituals, uh, there is so much wealth to draw from. So that if our contemporary artists uh, get rooted in this wealth, then their creations will be very distinctively Filipino and yet global in uh, I'm sure appreciation because um, some of the uh, tourists, for instance, they uh, go to our indigenous communities, they hear the chants, they tape it, and they use it. And it's um, being uh, uh, peddled as a tape, you know, and uh, that's their intellectual property right. We must guarantee that they have. Um, royalties that uh, in the marketing of their products they are not um, let's say even more marginalized because of the middleman and uh, so many things uh, in fact uh, when i was in ncca i introduced the concept of really building cooperatives micro lending so that uh, you really build their capacity and uh, it's wonderful because the United Nations now has um, really pushed for uh, a respect and integration of indigenous peoples, including culture now. It is in the declaration in Rio, and I'm really elated that it comes from us, the Philippines, that got that cultural component into the declaration that was our initiative in the Earth Savers when we were in uh, South Africa, in Durban. So it's um, really important that um, we, I say, access, and uh, it is a means of integration as well. Uh, it's um, to allow, if we're fighting poverty, uh, you really can't leave anyone behind. And education is the key to unlock this gridlock of poverty. So, your mom was in the right field. I, I tried to teach through the arts. By example. Yeah. And that's why when I founded PETA, and it will be 50 years next year, it was really to uh, begin to let people uh, be inspired to write, to dramatize, to create from the power of the language and lives of our people. And you can really communicate, you can really provide a mirror so that we can define our identity, know who we really are. It can be uh, a conscience, it can be an anchor if you really are rooted in your heritage and history. It is uh, a weapon, it's an armor to fight the social ills. I mean, uh, uh, we, for instance, do in our Radio Palintatao a soap opera on clean air, on trying to let people understand how pollution impacts on health, impacts on uh, not just health, but even your property, destruction of relationships. I mean, uh, it is a tool, an effective tool for communications, but without denigrating the artistic integrity, the skills, the uh, say fusion that must be developed uh, must be there but the service the meaning the uh, as i said the love affair with your audience that there is something very important you want to share and that should be the impulse of creation yeah and i, I fully agree and uh, you know like like they say uh, the potency of the word 
has a triple life, as yeah. red as we've been spoken. And yeah, like for instance, you were talking about your radio show, ma'am. So please, would you like to tell us about your yeah. radio show and how you have used this? Well, for instance, this February is going to be uh, the 30th anniversary, or marks the 30th anniversary of EDSA. It's very important, especially now it's election time, for people to remember you know, um, memory is important. And if by chance there are some manipulation to shift or change history or camouflage history, that's not good. You, the crime you commit to your nation by inflicting amnesia or Alzheimer's disease, uh, you know, it's important. I mean, your director is a doctor, you know, it's so important that uh, uh, the health of our mind, the health of the nation, uh, we have to keep memory, as they say, if you forget your past, you're bound to repeat whatever mistakes there were. And if you know your past too, you can draw from the great patriotism and love uh, for country that our heroes have manifested and that is our task now for everybody to protect the heritage of freedom, justice, peace, democracy and not to sell this uh, birthright, this sacred right to vote. That's the whole essence of democracy and the free media now. So. We're using our radio program to remember. Uh, we're having a play by Marilu Hapov on uh, A Country in Search of a Hero. It reflects on the comfortable dictatorship. There's a, a poetry of uh, Ninoy Aquino, Soc Rodrigo, uh, many other uh, music that really has uh, in a sense, uh, connected everybody in this arriving at people power to peacefully overthrow a democracy. I mean, I'm sorry, a dictatorship to really treasure the restoration of democracy. So it's important we're having a, a textula contest so the youth, the participants can text uh, their couplet or even their sonnet or whatever they wish that which we are all announcing to reflect on this glorious moment where the whole world admired the gallantry of our people and became a model I would say for a lot of uh, the Arab Spring and more earlier even the breakdown of the Berlin Wall so there's got to be pride in this, and um, the arts can do that. I was just at the Remembrance, and I spoke in the Remembrance of the Holocaust because the United Nations has declared a day for Remembrance of the Holocaust. And um, it's amazing how the Jews have kept that memory through their music, I, I mean, through their films, uh, just from the very beginning, you, some of us got connected to it early with the diary of Anne Frank. And so many more are revealed through their paintings, their photographs. I mean, you've got to recharge memories. Andali natin makalimot or madaling mabaliktad kung sino man ang uh, nandoon or sino man ang aangat. Uh, the integrity of history must be kept, must be defended. And I'm hoping because um, February is UNESCO Radio Day to show the importance of radio. So we're using it and don't forget it's now inscribed in the memory of the world in UNESCO. The um, uh, recording of the people power Yung, uh, the voices of June Kitley, the one that Father Reuter organized, it is now inscribed in the memory of the world. And uh, 
we're also trying to have inscribed in the memory of the world to parallel Mandela's um, uh, collection or what is inscribed with his speeches and defense in prison to do also the same thing uh, for Ninoy Aquino when he was also in jail and faced military tribunal. I mean, these people don't know. And uh, the young ones, you know, that's why me, I, I was afraid when we were in exile. Uh, my husband had a shoot to kill order and so he had to escape and he was tasked by uh, the opposition then to help run uh, democratic opposition overseas. I was afraid we, we would be out and I'd finally have my children and they may want to just remain in the state so I brainwashed them and <laughs> baptized them with the word exile so that they will remember that we were only there in transition to help in the battle for democracy. So, and I'm glad they're back, you know. Uh, they never stayed in the States. They renounced their American citizenship. My son, Hexalon, is a counselor and uh, moved into running as an independent, oh my God, but uh, that is his concept for good governance. So it's uh, important that we teach in many, many ways. I started with lullabies just to, in a sense, brainwash them that, you know, uh, I composed lullaby of an exile so that uh, still babies or young, they know that they are Filipinos. So, um, you were talking about, uh, you know, freedom and democracy. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, of course, these are really ideals yeah. and values. Yeah, know, that, values, that's the word. But um, also, on the, on, on the contrary, if everybody is, uh, you know, advocating freedom, and then they, they go their own ways, in different ways, yeah. in directions that are not really... Well, they should really understand what freedom means. Correct. So, you know, how are... It's I, education. It's nurturing uh, this idea early. It's ethics. Correct. It's a moral ethics. standard. And you can't just, uh, you know, say, oh, this is what you have to do, or these are the Ten Commandments, and you don't really provide the example or guide them to live it. So we're back to ethics. Yeah. And, Definitely. you know, the laws that are have to be anchored from the Ten Commandments. Yeah. And maybe these are the causes of the, the, the global global warming yeah. that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, actually, uh, global warming is because we didn't care, you know, we just consumerism attitude has even the Pope said that you have to rethink or shift from your consumerism maybe it's you know doing everything in moderation because consumerism is, is a good is a good yeah. point I mean everybody has got You're, to, you to live you and everybody to has have, sell. <laughs> you know everybody has has have to have uh, some sorts of living and mm -hmm. has, has have to you know um, Definitely, derive some yeah. income out of it to at least s sustain themselves. Yeah. So, um, and for instance, um, you know, but together with the art, well, money isn't evil by itself. It's yes. how you use it, how you accumulate yeah. it in, in the most in, mod in moderation. Uh -huh. so it's it's again ethics. Uh, sure, you have to earn, but you earn it in a just and uh, well yeah. fair way. I so mean, not. Yeah. Uh, in the Sakim, you know, right. Sakim for us is so colorful for greed. Maybe. So, like, for instance, some of the artists and even the scientists, you know, they, um, um, what do you call this, they grab and, um, you know, it's 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 not a it's not it's basically you know um, an ethics uh, issue. Yeah. It's basically a, 
uh, you know. So it's really something that is nurtured by the family. It begins with the family. And you know, it begins with the family, but it must be sustained in education and the places of worship. Uh, this is a triangulated, quadrangulated, if you want to call it, uh, because government must also uh, provide uh, the example, you know. But if, if people think that, oh, you can be uh, a kleptocrat, meaning to say you can keep on stealing and have uh, a good life and you're not able to uh, find out that you have to do reparation if you've been killing, if you've been uh, salvaging people or whatever. I mean, there's got to be uh, justice here. It's uh, equally a very important value and that's where all the, I, I'd say, the conflict starts when people feel they're oppressed, when people feel they're repressed, when they, people feel there's injustice. Uh, that's what gives birth to all the bad, bad vibes that occur. And we've got to really uh, tone down uh, or really cancel out wars. That's basic. And uh, you were talking about, uh, you know, somewhere in the articles that you sent, uh, you were talking about brain damage as, a, as one of the, you know, uh, as one of the uh, effects, the bad effects of climate change. And well, I, 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 so <coughs> much damage. I mean, yes. all the damage when, because climate change is really a catastrophe. It's total destruction, death. Lahat ng your home, your loved ones. I mean, if they're not gone, they're at least disabled, right? So it starts from the, you know, the, uh, the brain that is sort of compromised. Because some people will think that I'm doing right. Mm -hmm. But actually, you know, they're stealing names, they're stealing spouses, yeah. they're stealing <laughs> That's all copyrights yeah, and all that. Yeah. And uh, ideas and all that. So, you know, it boils down boils to down, ethics. Again. Boils down to ethics. And, you know, the proliferation of drugs and everything. Yes. Because drugs destroy the brain. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, and when the brains become smaller out because of the drug damage, it, it can never be um, restored anymore. The yeah. brain doesn't uh, regenerate anymore. It's, and, um, um, you know, maybe that's the reason why some, some of the crisis people so are much just crying so, now. Yeah, so deadly and all that. So it's, you were talking about, you know, the brain, uh, the brain damage and all this incestuous, <laughs> you know, behaviors out of some <laughs> wrongful brain <laughs> that yeah. from the climate change. And, um, well, it all boils down, like you said, to, you know, yeah, it's, it's not just physical. Mentally, you, as I said, you're discombobulated. Yeah. Because yeah. if you follow the, you know, the normal ways that our Heavenly Father has created us for, yeah. then everything will just be normal and non deceased But if, I think, problems come out when you try to go away out of the normal path, yeah. Then you know somehow in nature, like they say, nature is the best example of karma. Because if you toy around with karma, with nature gets back to you. It gets back to you in the other end. Yeah. <laughs> it's instant, instantaneously. Yeah. So um, you know the best ways to just follow, I think, the, you know, the, the natural rules. You know when uh, when this Haiyang thing occurred. I, I, I was really crying you know, when you see this or anywhere. I, I, I think that's what's important with the arts discipline is you build empathy. If everybody empathizes, if, if you cannot stand to see somebody suffering, then, uh, you know, things will go well. It, it, well, are you indifference? Well, are you callousness? Uh, there's really the essence of caring and uh, feeling the kinship, Liva. So it's basically compassion. Yeah. Well, that's the word of. Uh, that's why he has the year of mercy and compassion. 
uh, the Pope. And uh, what's wonderful, it's not just the Catholics, but all other religions in Paris we all converged on a similar declaration of caring really for creation, restoring the health and the bounty and the beauty of creation because that's the womb of life. And um, what's so important, I think, is communicating. There are communication gaps. When uh, somebody said, but hindi kayo umalis sa bahay niyo. Why didn't you leave? Everybody was telling you to leave. And they said, oh, they sort of got used to it. They didn't understand ocean surge. So this shows how important it is to communicate, to inform, to motivate and involve people in the action for the betterment of the community. And, and to make sure artists can have a very important role. Yeah, of in to make this. sure to make sure everybody's yeah. on the right page. Yeah. You know, to try to uh, rally everybody yeah. towards the right direction and the right to page. Read the heart <laughs> and the mind. If you let this work together, it's easier to more or less uh, understand uh, what is happening. I think that's the essence of being back. I mean, uh, you know, overcoming without neglecting yourself, taking care of yourself, but also being, you know, other centered for the others. And so you have this caring, compassionate. That's why, uh, with the help of the United Nations International Strategy for Disaster Reduction, which is headed then by Dr. Wallstrom, we were able to hold a global playwriting contest, and that was initiated here in the Philippines. We had Dr. Isagani Cruz as our chairman of the jury, involving other international juries. And we had 31 countries all over the continents participating to reflect on their own conditions as impacted by climate change and what is supposed to be done. And it's wonderful. Um, Slovenia won uh, at the grand prize and right in Paris at the tricontinental event that um, then Climate Change Commissioner chaired with uh, Chuchi Foundation, with Climate Institute, Ocean Security International. Uh, uh, Barbara Underlich was awarded a $5,000 prize. And uh, it's now being offered for translation for other countries, and it's supposed to inspire other countries to encourage the writers to reflect on their conditions and to try to find out how they might find resolutions for the problems that they confront. Yeah, and, and also going back to the Paris Accord, yeah, I read somewhere that you, your um, paintings that you brought yeah. there for the okay. you know, actually the, have some yeah, photos. Maybe I yeah. can share them with you. Actually, uh, there are 17 sustainable development goals that uh, the United Nations has unfolded at the General Assembly by Secretary General Ban Ki Moon. So what we did with the Earth Savers and in partnership with other uh, groups, you know, uh, Climate Commission, the mm -hmm. Metro Bank, etc., we were able to harness and showcase the talent of persons with disabilities because we call them handicapable. And each one reflected on the SDG. And we had um, one of our um, cerebral palsy uh, artist, uh, Nikki Pahati, doing couplet poems for each goal. And we exhibited this together with some out of school um, digital arts. And uh, it was reviewed as uh, the most attractive and colorful and uh, definitely a hit. So uh, here we were able through them to mark the United Nations Day for Persons with Disabilities, December 3, which would have 
passed a notice with all the areas of concern that everybody was uh, discussing. Uh, the out-of-school youth can contribute their talent. Mm -hmm. If everybody pulls together, you know, everything will go correctly and uh, rightfully uh, beneficial for our country and the world. And because uh, we talk of inclusive growth, pero kinakalimutan naman yung mga may kapansanan, kinakalimutan ng mga out of school youth, yung iba nga sabi, tinatago pag may malaking bisita. So, uh, we can highlight that they are really capable if you give them the equal opportunity. Equity, ethics, it's very important. Diba? Kung hindi, wow. Uh, magulo ang mundo. <laughs> so, uh, there you have it, folks. So, we had a very wonderful interview with a very wonderful uh, charge uh, expert in theater for the arts, Cecil Lagodoga. Thank you, Jim. It was wonderful to have this um, close encounter with the daughter of a good friend, Mona Valisno. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. Uh, you know, you your husband. Ah, sure. Uh, okay. Senator Alvarez. And so, folks, uh, that's it. Uh, one of the poems, by the way, that uh, Mrs. Alvarez was, um, you know, uh, had a hit for in, in the Paris Accord when she got to pay these, said that um, our world cannot survive on weakness. And the Earth, Mother Earth, has given everything that we need. So on that note, uh, we hope uh, all of you, we hope to see all of you again in, in our next episode. Thank you and good evening.